Podcast 8, Week 10. Welcome to the podcast, Your Pregnancy Week by Week. This podcast covers the 40 weeks of pregnancy in 38 segments and is based on the book, Your Pregnancy Week by Week, by Dr. Glade Curtis, MD, and me, Judith Schuler, MS. The information in our books and podcasts is a general informative guide about pregnancy. None of the information we provide is intended to replace, countermand, or conflict with the advice given to you by your own doctor. Always follow his or her advice. Use the information you learn here as a starting place in your dialogue to help you put your pregnancy concerns, questions, or interests into words. The goal of every pregnancy is a healthy mom and a healthy baby. To that end, our podcasts cover many topics. In each weekly podcast, we'll highlight information contained in the same weekly discussion in our book. We suggest you read each weekly chapter to learn further information, such as how baby is growing and changing and how you're growing and changing too. Our book also contains illustrations of changes in baby or you, advice for dads, charts, lists, boxes, an exercise for every week, a comprehensive glossary, hints, tips, snippets, and blurbs we just can't reproduce in a podcast. So let's get started on this week's discussion. We're going to look at week 10. Are you getting emotional? You may feel moody, cry at the slightest thing, or drift off in daydreams. Emotional swings are normal and may continue throughout your pregnancy. However, if you feel depressed, talk to your doctor about it as soon as possible, especially if you suffer from depression before pregnancy. Women enter pregnancy at many different weights. If you're underweight when you get pregnant, your doctor may advise you to gain between 28 and 40 pounds. You need to gain weight now to give baby the nutrients it needs. If you don't gain enough weight, it can affect baby's growth. Work hard to eat healthfully. Your good nutrition during pregnancy can go a long way to helping you feel good. And it will give baby the nutrients it needs to grow healthy and strong, ready to be born. The seasonal flu seems to be a problem every year because different flu viruses come and go. Influenza can impact a pregnant woman. To protect yourself, be sure you get a seasonal flu shot and any specific flu vaccine every year. You can get a flu shot any time during pregnancy. It's considered very safe. If you think you have the flu, call your doctor and follow his or her guidelines about using meds to treat it. The benefits of taking medicine far outweigh any risk to baby. Rubella is a contagious disease caused by a virus. It's also called German measles, but it's caused by a different virus than regular measles. We've greatly reduced the risk of rubella through vaccination efforts. But if you're not vaccinated, you're at risk of getting it if you're exposed to someone who's infected. Rubella is most dangerous for a pregnant woman's baby. Infection causes the most damage to the fetus during the first trimester. A rubella test may be done at your first prenatal appointment. If you're not immune, you can get vaccinated after pregnancy. If you get rubella, your doctor will plan the best course of treatment for you. Did you have chicken pox as a kid? Today, we're lucky to have the chicken pox vaccine available. It's greatly reduced the number of people who get the disease. If you get chicken pox during pregnancy, take good care of yourself. About 15% of those infected also get pneumonia, which can be very serious. If you're exposed, call your doctor immediately. He or she will decide whether you need varicella zoster immune globulin. If you get it within 72 hours of exposure, it can help prevent infection and or lessen symptoms. You need protein during pregnancy. The goal is 6 ounces of protein each day during the first trimester and 8 ounces a day during the second and third trimesters. Protein should make up about 15% of your total daily calorie intake. 
but don't eat too much protein. Many protein sources are high in fat. If you need to watch your calories, choose low-fat protein foods. In the past, older women were offered tests to see if a fetus was affected by some chromosome problems, such as Down syndrome. Today, it's recommended that all pregnant women be offered these tests. Babies born with Down syndrome have an extra chromosome 21. The syndrome occurs in about 1 in 800 births. Many screening tests are available to screen for Down syndrome. And if a screening test indicates there might be a problem, a diagnostic test is usually ordered. The two tests used for diagnosis are amniocentesis and chorionic villus sampling. We just mentioned chorionic villus sampling, CVS. The test is usually done between 9 and 11 weeks of pregnancy, which is earlier than amniocentesis. Results are available in about one week. CVS involves placing an instrument through the cervix or abdomen to remove fetal tissue from the placenta for testing. If your doctor recommends CVS, ask about its risk. The test should be performed only by someone experienced in the technique. Fetoscopy is another test that may be offered. It is done on you to provide information on baby. A small scope is placed through a woman's abdomen to provide a view of the baby and placenta inside the uterus. Fetoscopy is most often used to diagnose twin-to-twin transfusion syndrome, amniotic band syndrome, and congenital diaphragmatic hernia. If your doctor suggests it, ask what he or she is looking for. Ask about possible risks. The test should be done only by someone experienced in the technique. You may have seen over-the-counter gender tests that use blood or a urine sample to determine a baby's sex. To take the test, a woman pricks her finger to get some blood or pees on a stick, then sends a sample to the test kit's lab. Results are sent back by mail. The science behind the testing is sound, but the test may not be as accurate as the makers claim. If you take one of these tests, don't rely on the results. Think of it as a fun test to do together. Remember, our podcasts give you the highlights of what may be happening in any given week. Check our book, Your Pregnancy Week by Week, for more detailed information. You may also want to check out our book for partners, Your Pregnancy for the Father-to-Be. It covers pregnancy from a man's point of view and provides lots of valuable information a man may find very useful. If you want to find out more about our podcast, visit our website, yourpregnancyweekbyweek.com. If you're looking for something specific, check out the podcast topics list. It details topics covered in each podcast, so you can listen to a particular podcast or read a certain chapter week if you want more information, or if you want to check out something you missed or a topic we haven't covered yet.